Hey everyone, today we're going to be talking about Bonsai Buddy. He's this purple monkey right here that took the internet by storm back in the early 2000s. He was actually a desktop buddy, which means that he comes up front and center over all your other applications, he talks to you, um, he becomes your friend basically, and he has all kinds of things that he can do, as you can see here, um, browse the internet, email, talk, just a bunch of really basic functionality that's built into your buddy. So I thought it would be fun to recreate Bonsai Buddy, and actually it's not as hard as it sounds because he's based around this Microsoft Agent API here that Microsoft had originally built for Clippy the Paperclip um, to go with Microsoft Word, but then due to how easy it is to implement, the Bonsai company created Bonsai Buddy using it. So it's pretty easy to spin up a little application and get Bonsai Buddy on the screen. And then another thing that you can do really easily is getting him to read out text. So for instance, Hi, I'm Bonzi Buddy. It's nice to meet you. So that's just his default voice. Um, you can actually alter the voice, but that's something else. And the last thing that we're going to get him to do today would be to play an animation. So you don't have to create all of these animations and sounds and stuff from scratch. Um, it's all bundled in a little .acs file, which is a Microsoft Agent file that we just download and include. So yeah, that's what we're going to be doing today. If you'd like to follow along and build your own version of Bonza Buddy, um, I'm going to have all the links in the description below. I think it would be a really great programming project if you're just learning programming and you want to make a little cool, unique application. Um, this is definitely something that you can play around with. It's got a lot of interesting technology buried in it. So the last thing I want to add is if you like this video and you wouldn't mind subscribing, it would really help the channel out and me and Bonsai Buddy here would really appreciate it. Okay, so first I want to show you this page. This page, which is going to be in the description below, is microsoftagent.weebly.com and it has some applications like this MASH application which allows you to load and control the characters. Um, this application will actually let you do everything that you saw in the intro. Um, that's kind of, we're just building a very simple version of this application um, initially, but then we're gonna add some cool functionality later. And then if you wanna get really fancy and program in some AI and stuff, you can do that. But I'm just gonna show you the simple steps to get started. And this page here is definitely a good core hub because they have links for, say, that MASH application so you can do some testing and get things working. Um, they have a link here for the double agent, which is what I'm going to tell you that we should download um, first. The Microsoft Agent API has actually been discontinued by Microsoft years and years ago before Windows 7 came out. But then users went in and created their own version of Microsoft Agent that ports it to Windows 7 and Windows 10. So all you have to do as far as this is concerned is just run through the setup and I've already installed it, but you just run through the setup and install double agent. And once that's installed, you will be able to run your characters. So you'll be able to come here and download the MASH application and then load in the character right here. And if you can load it in here, that means you'll be able to load it in code as well when we get to creating the application. So this is definitely the hub you wanna to use to get most of your downloads. Um, to get the bonsaibuddy.acs file, which is his character file, um, I use this link here. So I'll have a link to this bonsai.acs file in the description below, so you won't have to go here, but it is on this page right here. Um, then you just want to download this ACS file. This guy also has his own application here, but I don't really care about that. Um, I just want to download this ACS file, so I have Bonzo Buddies animations and stuff. Okay, so now that we've downloaded the ACS file, um, we've installed Double Agent, the next thing you want to do is bring up MASH and then you want to add a character here. Okay, so since I already have the Bonsai Buddy character loaded, I'm going to load a different character. So I'm going to come here and grab this alien character. I'm going to download that and then I'm going to go to MASH, which is the program that I'm just using for testing before we write our own. And in MASH, there's a character folder. 
So first you want to go to select your character folder and mine is C slash agents. So I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to go to that folder and I'm going to paste my aliens.acs file in there so that MASH can see the character. And from that point, I'm going to refresh the character list. Ah! My Windows theme is going to yell at me. And now I have Alien in the dropdown. So I'm going to go ahead and load Bonsai Buddy up. And you're going to get this Cheyenne box around him. And this is what Microsoft Agent looks like. So if you have just Microsoft Agent installed, then you're going to get the Cheyenne box. And this is where Double Agent that we downloaded earlier comes in. So what I did here was I just searched for Double Agent on my computer. And I found this Double Agent file that has, um, that has to be turned on effectively. So you install Double Agent and then you choose to use Double Agent. And now I'm going to hide Bonsai Buddy again. Okay, so once you've turned on Use Double Agent, and I had to reload MASH, like I had to open and close this to get this to work, but then we just hit show, and Bonsai Buddy swings in in all of his glory without the blue square around him. So we're ready to go. At this point, you've got Double Agent installed, you've got Bonsai Buddy downloaded, and you're ready to start writing code. So we're going to open Visual Studio and get started. All right, so we're going to create a new project. And I guess I'm going to do this in C Sharp. And we're going to create a Windows Forms application. So I'm going to click Next. I'm going to get Bonsai Buddy out of the way. And uh, so we're going to hit Bonsai Buddy as the name. And framework is 4.7. That stuff doesn't matter. This is It's saved in this repo. And we have our form. So I'm going to make this form a little smaller. And then I'm going to change the text to Bonsai Control Board. And we're gonna go up here and call it a uh, form. Uh, I'm just gonna call it form dashboard because that's what I call most of my stuff. All right, and you could give it a cool icon, but I, I don't have one on hand. Um, some kind of like bonsai buddy icon. You could definitely find something like that on Google. Um, so we're just gonna add one button for now. And this button is gonna be called show. All right, so this button's whole goal in life is to show Bonsai Buddy. So that'll be step one, just showing this guy. Uh, center and form horizontally, center and form vertically, sorry, okay. Um, so I'm gonna go to the click event for this button and double click that so we get the show event. Okay, so I know we just created this function. Now we're gonna go back to the designer and we actually need to add a reference for Bonsai Buddy. Okay, so we're gonna need to add references. So we're gonna click references and then browse. And here, we're gonna go to our C program files, double agent, where we had installed double agent. There's a dev folder inside of that. And then we're gonna go in this V 4.0 folder. We're gonna grab all three of these DLLs here and add references to them. We're gonna click okay, it's gonna add it here. Now, uh, I just, I save all the time, it's a habit. Um, so now we go back to our code and these four lines of code are gonna be the trick um, to just get the character on the screen. Okay, so to break down these four lines of code, the first one here instantiates a new version of the AX control, which is the control that's gonna load the character. So we create it and we call it new agent. Then we need to run this create control that actually like creates the control as far as the characters and stuff are concerned. Okay, so then we get into the character specific code. So here we're gonna load a new character. Um, the ID of that character is gonna be Bonsai. I've put the ACS file that we downloaded previously inside of C slash agent slash Bonsai dot ACS. Um, I will show you that now. So C agents, bonsai.acs um, apparently it's not case sensitive but that that's where mine is and then the last line here um, we reference this bonsai character with our new agent object and we show it so that's it for the code for the show button so I'm gonna go ahead and run it now 
and click show. And Bonsai Buddy swings onto the scene. So now you've got this little dude. Um, you can right click him and click hide. Yeah, so it doesn't look like we're gonna need to write a hide button since um, you can right click him and click hide. And you can actually edit this menu, but we'll get into that later. So, all right, so we've got our show button and that's kind of cool. But um, the next thing is we wanna get him talking. So the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go to the form and I'm gonna go to the form load event because I wanna make this um, new agent control actually accessible in the rest of the class. So we're gonna declare it outside of any of these functions and we're gonna say new agent equals this. Okay, so this will instantiate the agent when the form loads. Um, and honestly, we'll just go ahead and set everything up when the form loads, but we won't show the character until they click the show button. And honestly, for simplicity's sake, we're gonna make a hide button as well. So I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna call it command hide, and we will add hide. So this will just kind of make life a little simpler um, and get us a little more familiar with uh, creating different functions and how we're gonna use this. So it's gonna look a whole lot like the show there. We're gonna reference Bonsai inside of our new agent instance, which is actually accessible to the whole class now. Okay, so we're gonna build it now. And so initially it will run the code in form dashboard load and it'll load our character and then we click show and it's gonna show our character. And then we're gonna click hide and he's gonna go away. All right, so now we've kind of created a control panel for him and the next thing we're gonna do is get him to start talking. All right, so we're gonna add another button and we're gonna call it, uh, or we're gonna change the text on it to speak. And we will say CMD speak. Okay, so we've added a new speak button. And with that, we're gonna add a text box so that we can just write some text in. We'll call this text TXT speak. Um, we'll go ahead and change the font size to 12 so you guys can see it. And we'll just make it go all the way across and put the speak button there. I'm not a huge fan of this layout, but I guess it's good enough for now. Um, we're going to change the default text of the text box so I don't have to type this in every time. Um, I'm just going to say, uh, hey, it's nice to meet you. Um, so we'll just have him say that. That'll be our goal here. Okay, so now we're going to begin to write the code to actually make him speak. So it's going to be new agent characters and then reference bonsai. And then we're gonna do dot speak. And here we're just gonna say, um, this is a test. So we're gonna try to get him to say this is a test. So we load it, we show Bonza Buddy here, and then we click speak. This is a test. And there you go, um, he's already talking. So now let's go ahead and get him to say what's in our text box. So I'm gonna hide Bonza Buddy again and close the form. And instead of this, we're gonna say txt speak.text so that he'll just say what's in the text box. So we are gonna show him again. And now we're gonna click speak. Hey, it's nice to meet you. All right, so now we've got him speaking. So that's pretty cool. So the last thing I wanna do is get him to move around. So we're gonna make another button and we're gonna say move for the text and we're gonna call it CMD move. Okay, so we're just gonna have him move to where the cursor is. So use this move to function here. And so for X, we're gonna say cursor.position.x and we're gonna subtract 60 because that's kind of how wide he is. And then for the Y, we're gonna say cursor.position.y and then subtract 60 again. Um, okay, so it really wants this to be an integer. So we're gonna say um, 
convert dot two int thirty two and see if that works. And then here convert dot two int sixteen. Let's see. I think that's what it wants. Yeah, it wants an int sixteen. So two int sixteen. All right. So now we have this. Uh, definitely wants a semicolon at the end. Let me move this properties window. Okay. So it's basically just move to and then an X and a Y. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and hit start again. And now we're gonna click show to bring out Bonsai Buddy. And now we're gonna click move and he should move to where my cursor is. Boom, and there he is. All right, so we'll go ahead and hit move again. And he actually moves to where my cursor was when I clicked move, which is kind of amusing. Okay. All right, so we'll go ahead and hide him again and stop. Okay, so what I think would be cool is to have him move to one of the four quadrants on the screen. I don't see a lot of value in him moving to where the cursor is. That just sounds like it's gonna get in your way all the time. Okay, so first we're gonna go for the uh, top left. So we're gonna try to get him to move to the top left of the screen, which I'm gonna bet is gonna be zero, zero. So let's go ahead and show him, move him to the middle of the screen and click move and see where zero zero is. All right, so the top left is zero zero. So now we're gonna try to get the top right and we're gonna say new agent dot characters um, bonsai dot move to and for the X, we're gonna say the screen dot primary screen, which is hopefully gonna be my middle monitor, dot bounds dot width. So the width of the primary screen minus 100. That'll be our X and we'll set the Y to zero to be at the top. So then this is gonna want that same thing like the mouse had where it's two int 16. And we're gonna convert this to an int 16. And all right, so now it'll run. So we've commented out our first line, so he's not gonna move to the top left. And we're gonna see if this will move him to the top right. So we're gonna go ahead and hit move. And he's gonna sail across our screen all the way to the top right. Although he kinda went a little too far. So we'll knock him back a little to say 200. I'm gonna run it again and I'm gonna show him over here and we're gonna have him fly across the screen one more time and hopefully this time he doesn't end up on my other monitor perfect that sounds good to me okay so now we just need to find the bottom of the screen um, this will get a lot faster too so we're gonna go to the bottom right actually so we know that this is the right of the screen let's do the height now so this is gonna be Actually here, let, let me do this. Um, uh, int third, uh, int 16 equal this. Um, uh, int 16 screen width. And then we're gonna do uh, screen height. And this isn't technically gonna be the screen width and screen height. This is gonna be the character's representation of that. It's gonna be the screen width minus 200 and the screen height minus 200. Um, so it's gonna be an approximation. Um, so here we're gonna say um, screen width and then here for this X, we're still gonna have screen width. And then here, now we can just say screen height. So his start location is basically gonna be the width and the height which is gonna be down here at the very bottom right, but you're setting his top left position. So we're gonna click show again, and now we're gonna click move, and hopefully he'll move to the bottom right. Oh, I accidentally left his first command in, so he moved to the top right first, and now he's gonna move on down to the bottom right, which is perfect. Um, okay, so we're gonna stop this, and there's a bunch of different ways that I could do this, but I'm gonna create um, a function called move bottom right and have him 
and that will move him to the bottom right. And I'm gonna create another function called move top right, which is gonna move him to the top right using that same line of code as before. Um, um, so those are our rights. So I'm gonna do move top left, which should be our um, zero zero. So I'm gonna say here is zero zero. So then our last one is gonna be move bottom left. Okay, so we're gonna want screen height on the right side. So we're just gonna go ahead and put screen height there. And now I've got red squigglies everywhere because the inside of these functions, we can't see screen height and screen width. I'm gonna take this code and I'm gonna move it all the way up here outside of any kind of function and that way it'll be accessible by all of these move functions. So what we're gonna do now is when they click the move button, we're gonna move them to the top right just to test calling our function and that the screen width has been gotten and that everything is all right. So now we're gonna move them to the top right. And there we go. Okay, so now the last thing that I wanna do is I wanna have this move button move him somewhere randomly. So we're gonna create a little random number generator that's just gonna be like two lines of code. Okay, so to have Bonsai Buddy move to a random part of the screen, we're gonna randomly call one of these functions using a switch. Okay, so first we need to get a new random number. And to do that, we're gonna create a new random. We're gonna call it RND and it's gonna equal a new random. Normally you wanna seed these, but I don't really care right now and I'm just gonna give it a five. Um, so we're gonna say rnd.next and this is gonna return a random integer. int direction equals rnd.next and we're gonna pass that one for the minimum value it can be and a five for the exclusive upper bound, which means it's not gonna be five, it's gonna be four. So it's gonna be one through four. So direction is gonna be a random number between one and four. So now we're gonna make a switch and we're gonna switch on that direction. So we're gonna say case one. In the case that it's one, we're gonna move to the top left and then break and then case two will move to the top right. And case three, move bottom left. And then case four, move bottom right. All right, so uh, we need our brakes. I'm sorry, I forgot those. Uh, oops, I also can't type. A break there and a break there. Okay, and now stop yelling at me. So we'll hit F5. All right, so we're gonna show Bonsai Buddy again, and now we'll click move, and he's gonna move to a random place. So then if we click move again, he'll move to another random place, theoretically speaking. So this is a valuable lesson in why you can't seed the random with the same number over and over again. Okay, so we need to take out the seed for the random. Don't, if you seed random with a constant, you're always gonna get the same random number over and over again. So we're gonna click show, and then we're gonna click move. And then Bonsai Buddy is gonna move to a random place. So he's moving to the bottom right. Now we're gonna click move again, and he'll move to a new random place. Okay, so that about wraps up this video. Um, we got this dashboard set up here so we can show Bonsai Buddy and we can hide him. Um, we can get him to talk and we can get him to move around. And in the next video, we're going to have him start randomly playing animations and do some more talking but reading from a file instead so that he can tell us some jokes. And we're just going to get a timer set up and have him do stuff based on a timer so that we don't need this form to control him anymore. He can just kind of act on his own and kind of start taking on his own personality, if you will. Um, so yeah, we're definitely gonna take this a little farther and I think it'll be a lot of fun. This is a project that I really enjoy playing around with, but that's it for now. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.